Hey, this is Stephen from Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome to Java tutorial number 21. This is going to be the blackjack game, the infamous blackjack game that a lot of classes and uh, books and stuff like that would end with this because this sums up a lot of the things that we've learned in the beginning and intermediate series. And I believe that I will probably cut the immediate, the intermediate series here and start with the advanced series. And now the advanced series would be it could be either or you could either watch it or move on to programming something like Android which I will have on as well but I would check uh, I would go through it and uh, you know experience it yourself we will be going over um, embedded UI you using uh, swing and stuff like that but that determines whether uh, I'm going to continue on with that series, uh, I, I mean, um, if I'm going to stop the series here, for sure I'm going to do that. But I don't know if this is going to be the last video. It probably will be, and then we'll continue on from there. Because I'm going to try to get it as streamlined as possible, so you could um, get the most out of it, and it be the best layout and best sorting on my uh, playlist as possible. So uh, we're going to do a blackjack game now. What I would suggest here is I'm not going to spend, you know, the 30 minutes typing it. I'm just going to spend the 15 minutes explaining what I did and some of the things that you should be looking for when doing your um when doing your program and uh some of the tips and tricks and things to look out for and where to start. So, uh I think the best thing for you is you could do one of two things. You could either try it on your own and then if you get stuck or if you you know need help or if you did finish and you want to see how I did it I'm going to explain it right now so you know stop the video right here try it try it on your own it should take you around 15 20 minutes maybe even 30 minutes and then uh we're going to go over it all right so uh if you did leave welcome back here we go um so here we are so this is a uh, create a new class. You go remember file new class and call it blackjack or blackjack test. I called this one blackjack test. We have the string type int current card. So this is holding the current card and this is an instance variable. This is holding the total Avast in your hand. Virus database has this, been updated. Well, either in your hand or the dealer's hand, and these are static. So so the static methods will hold. The dealer and the player. So now this this whole thing is encapsulated in a recursion call. So basically, what happens is that I'm going to create. It doesn't it doesn't care whether it's a player or dealer. So the whole program right here uses will be um, multi multi use for dealer and player. I could use the same exact class. So, but I do need them separate so I can compare them at the end. So that's why I store it in a static variable, not an instance variable. So once I set this, both instances of a player and a dealer will be able to see these two variables. So we have static int dealer total equals zero, static int player total equals zero. So these are going to store the total cards and they're going to compare them at the end. And then we, we create a new random to generate a random card, a new scanner to, uh, to input whether you want to hit or stay. And here is our constructor, and this string player is whether it's a, a player and what your name is, or whether it's a dealer. So you set type is equal to player, system.outprint ln, so it's printing out that the game's starting, and then it jumps right into it. So it goes to deal, and then it goes to game. So let's go ahead and trace the logic here. So now we're jumping down to deal. So system.outprint, it says your first card is display card. So now we go to display card. Let's go ahead and jump to display card. So basically all it does is it generates a random number between 0 and 14. So you have uh zero so you have 0 through 10 and um then you have jack queen king ace. So that's another 4. And then I I was lazy. I guess you could just hit plus 1 to get it to not give you a a a 1. But in case, I mean, not get a zero, but just in case I do generate a zero, it will just generate it again until it is not a zero in there, uh, zero numbers. Now I'll never get a zero. Now uh, the switch, current card, or you can set zero to ace and set this 13. It doesn't matter. I, I did it this way so I could trace it 
And as you can see, I can tell that that's what I did easily. It's not something really confusing how you're setting an ace to a zero. So this is, this is better readability, I guess, in my case. It will make it slower, you know, if you have to generate another random, but not too much slower. So I wouldn't really worry about it too much. And then we jump into the switch, which we recently learned about. And now each of the card from 1 to 10 is going to be its own value. It's not a special card. Now, if you get 11, it is still a 10, and it will tell you you drew a jack. If it is a 12, it will tell you you drew a queen, and still add the 10 to the total. And then it will display, of course, your current total. And then you see a break to keep it from falling through. And system dial print type, uh, you, drew a, uh, you drew a king, and then you're still adding 10. And then here an ace. Now, in this particular interface, I kept, I mean, in this particular program, I kept it short so we could go in here and physically type in some uh, extra points as far as making ace one, adding betting, um, you know, adding suits, that kind of thing. So we could add on to this. And uh, we'll do that in the advanced sector when we're adding the advanced series, when we're adding GUI and stuff like that using swing. Okay, so uh, here we're on the ace, and here we're just going to make ace 11. We're not going to worry about the other. That one's kind of easy to implement, but we're only going to have it worth 11 right now. And it'll tell you your total. And now, if it's not 11, 12, 13, 14, or, or, uh, or th those ones there, it will be, it'll be 1 through 10. So then it'll just tell you you drew a 10, or a 1, or a 2, and then it'll add that to the total, and they'll print out your total. So there you go, that handles all of our situations there for the random numbers. And it's all encapsulated inside its own method to make everything nice and clean. And you can see it's very few lines. Now uh, here we go, void deal. So uh, wait, we're going to go back to where we were. Okay, so we were right here. So here, and then it's going to go back into that, recall that method, and generate your second card. And here it's going to tell you your second card is, and then I'll do this guy here. You drew an ace or whatever you drew a current card. So now we have our two cards. Now the void game, it's going to go from deal to game. Now in game, if total is less than 21, and here, so, so if you haven't busted, it will give you the option to hit. And it'll also check to make sure that you are not a dealer, because if you're not a dealer, it needs to do its own um, custom check. So here it'll say if uh, scan dot next line dot equals yes. Wait, it'll say uh, it'll go here. If you're not a dealer and you're a player, it'll say would you like to hit yes. Um, you know yes is good. Then scan if it equals yes it will jump in and display the card and as you saw with display card it'll generate another card and then it will go to game in game where the heck is game oh it will jump back in here so it'll jump back into the method and recall itself and see if you want to hit and check if you busted or not. If you do not want to hit, it will tell you your total and it will set that static variable, save your static variable as your total into player total. And if you uh, did bust, it will say um, system.outprint type plus busted plus total. So here it will tell you your name, you busted, and then your total. So if it's a dealer, this one also works for a dealer, and it'll say dealer busted total. I guess in this case it says dealer wins, but that's that's uh that's that's not that's the, that wouldn't be right. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that guy. And then system dot exit makes it jump out, and it will not go into this if. So this is a good thing right here. System dot exit zero and it will jump out and go to this here. We'll go over what the main says down there. So in here we got, um, if, if it is a dealer, and uh, this one also is very minimalistic, we could, we're gonna add more stuff down here to make him a little smarter. But here it says if he's less than 17, 
and if he hasn't busted, he has to hit. So he has to display a card and then jump back into game again. However, if the he's got to be smart to where uh, if the player... So let's say the player has 18 and the dealer drew... I mean, let's say the player has 19 and the dealer drew 18. He's obviously going to hit and try to get some something better than a 19. So this here will make him hit to beat the player. So those two, and these are double brackets, so this means or. So if the total is less than 17 and his total has not busted 21, then uh, player total, yeah. This might cause a problem. Okay, so here it will dip basically hit, uh, hit, and then if if these do not equal true, then it will just save that that um, variable into dealer total. And then here we have who won. So the if dealer total equals equals zero, system dot out print dealer busted because basically what happens is that. He busted, so he's not saving his total here. Because here it goes into else here, so if the if the if the player busts, it doesn't save his total. And if the dealer busts, he doesn't save his total either. But I need to change this. So let me So we're going to add an if here. We're going to say uh, if his total is less than 21, then it will do that. It will do that guy. All right, and then here, so we're back in here. So if dealer total equals 0, dealer bus. If player total equal, equals 0, player bus. If uh, dealer's total is higher than player's total, the dealer won. If the, if the dealer's total is less than the player's total, then the player won. And if the dealer's total equals equals the player's total, uh, system dot out print um, push draw. And this is going to be an else if. Actually, this is going to be an if. This is going to be an else. is going to be an if. So there you go. And now we're I know there might be some problems here, but we're going to clean up. So so this is our this is our rough draft prototype and we're going to clean this up as we go further into the advanced uh, series. So here is uh first we're creating a blackjack test object calling it my name and it sending it my name and then you do blackjack uh, test dealer and you have to set you have to set the, the, the type as dealer in order for it to go in. You see here, this has got to match with this. And then it goes into Steven and who won. It doesn't matter who you do. You could do dealer or Steven. It doesn't matter who won. And then it will tell you who won. So let's go ahead and run it take a look. Okay, so it says game started. First card is Steven drew four. Steven's current total, four. Second card is drawn. Uh, Steven drew a jack. Steven's current total is 14. Would you like to hit? Yes. I do a seven. I did a. I drew a seven. I got a 21. Nope. So let's see what happened with the dealer. First card is dealer drew a two. Dealer's current total two. Second card is dealer drew a queen. Wait, dealer drew a two. Dealer's current total is two. Uh, second card is dealer drew a queen, so it's 12. Dealer drew a 4, 16. He has to hit. Dealer drew a queen. Dealer busted at 26. So um, that's basically it right there. Uh, uh, dealer busted, so I win. So here, th this didn't quite work correctly, but we'll fix that. So um, 
Yeah, so so this is basically what a, a shell of a blackjack game would look like. And you can see that this is very, very clean. And these recursion calls with these switches are very, very nice. Uh, the display cards. So every time I need it to display a card, I just write display card. So I make these methods right here, like the deal. This only is called at the beginning of the game. And then these gate, uh, and then this game is very easy to make recursive because you could just pass the game and keep going back and forth through it. And it also works whether it's a dealer or a player type. So uh, how you would basically do this is go ahead and and get to the part where I'm hovering over something and then hit pause and type all this stuff in, type all this, type everything in. Uh, pause when you when you see it and type it in, and uh, you know, add stuff to it. Go go, go crazy with it. You know, add, add add things that you want to do. It try to make it to where you could bet and things like that, and um, make it to where aces work for eleven and one. That will be, I guess, you could say your homework. And we will expand on this in some of our other uh, classes that we made, some of the other uh, projects and uh, projects or programs that we made and turn those into graphical uh, programs, Windows programs. Alright, so I, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to uh, this is going to be the end of the intermediate um, the uh, intermediate tutorial series and we're going to go on to advanced Java and we're going to have GUIs and data structures inside advanced but there will be more uh, specifications in that first video of the advanced series. Alright, so this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and I would like to thank you for watching my intermediate Java tutorial number 21. Stay tuned for 22, whether that's intermediate or advanced, probably going to be advanced, but I'll see you then. More details then. Subscribe for more videos in my series and other series like this one, and I'll see you next video.